Hello, nature lovers. All right, it's time for another exciting video. This one is all about types of systems and how to tell those systems apart. Uh, before we start that, though, I'd like to do a quick recap of our last video, which was what makes a system? What are the components of a system? And to help illustrate this, let's look at a candle system. All systems have three major components, inputs, a process, and outputs. In the case of a candle system, the input is our flame, which provides heat, and oxygen from the air comes in, and the wick is the third input into this, which is encased in wax. Once we light the candle, the process of combustion occurs, assuming we provide all the needed inputs, which we have, and now as the candle burns, products of combustions, or outputs, are released. They include light, heat, gases such as carbon monoxide, and smoke, which has particulate matter. Because we have all three components, inputs, processes, and outputs, we have a system. Okay, now that you understand what makes up a system, let's look at the types of systems. So there's three. The first is open, the second is closed, and the third is isolated. And what defines these different types of systems is whether or not energy and matter come in as inputs and if they leave as outputs and they di they differ depending on the type of system so here's a little chart the first kind of system is an open system this means that both energy and matter enter the system as inputs and both energy and matter leave the system as outputs an example of an open system is an ecosystem. Sunlight is inputted into the system, so energy can be checked off. And water, which is a form of matter, is inputted as precipitation. Check. There's other matter and energy that might come in, but there's two examples. They are processed via photosynthesis, so there's our process. And the water is processed into oxygen, which leaves the forest, so we have outputted matter and sunlight is processed into glucose, which is processed into heat by the animals and plants, which leave the system. So that heat, which is created during cellular respiration, it, and really all the cellular functions, it is released out to the atmosphere and it dissipates out around the world, so it actually leaves that forest ecosystem. So that's an output of, of uh, energy, okay? So that's the first kind of system. The second kind of system is a closed system. Now in this kind of system, matter does not enter or leave the system, but energy is inputted and energy is outputted. And the reality is scientists seldom see closed systems naturally, okay? Um, because matter is almost always inputted and outputted. But the closest we naturally come to a closed system is the Earth which has lots and lots and lots of energy in the form of sunlight inputted into the system, and then heat is outputted from the system, as well as light and sound and other types of energy, but heat is the primary one. Um, there is some matter that comes in as comets or meteors, well, hopefully not comets too often, but meteors, but the reality is we don't lose a lot of matter, we don't gain a lot of matter, but we gain a lot of energy and we lose a lot of energy. So the Earth is an example in quotations of a closed system. Now the final type of system is an isolated system. Okay. Now this is the last, this uh, kind of system doesn't really exist. At least no one's found an example yet. In an isolated system, there's no inputs of matter, there's no inputs of energy, there's no outputs of matter or energy. And the closest we get is the universe. That's what we might say as a model because theoretically no energy or matter enters or leaves the universe because it's so large, but that's really up for debate. There might be other universes. We don't know if stuff comes in and out from the there, but the guess is, is that it doesn't. And so um, that's why they call that an isolated system. Now note that there are processes happening in the universe and matter and energy are entering and leaving them, but as the whole picture of the universe, uh, we don't have energy or matter entering or leaving. So there's the three types of systems, open, closed, and isolated. I hope this video has been clear about the types of systems and what's required for each type of system. If not, please come see me or shoot me an email, preps at spsmail.org. Uh, our next video is going to explore the topic of thermodynamics, a nail-biter to be sure. 
So until then, peace out.